So my today's podcast guest is Dr. Travis Ziegler. Dr. Ziegler is an eye doctor and he is taking his passion of healing dry eyes naturally and turned it into a multi-million dollar business. So if you're interested in learning how to heal dry eyes naturally and how to turn your healthcare business idea into a multi-million dollar business, stay tuned. So without further ado, Dr. Travis Ziegler. Travis, welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Awesome. I am super excited to, you know, hear your passion about healing dry eyes and how you're like making mul multiple millions using that passion and knowledge. So I want to start by asking you, like, you know, um, what is it that you currently do? Yeah, so my wife and I are on a mission to heal one million dry eye sufferers naturally. And by training, we're actually optometrists. And so right. we were, we graduated from optometry school yeah. in 2010. And in 2011, we practiced optometry with my uncle. He, my uncle has a practice in Columbus, Ohio. We practiced with him until about 2014. And then in 2014, we, I kind of felt an itch to do something else. So we did the three things you're not supposed to do. We, we left our job. We moved Correct. across the country to South Carolina and we started two businesses. Right. At the same time as starting these two practices, right. we kind of felt a, a calling to start doing something online. And so we came up with a company called I Love, which is our company now. Right. And here we are five years later, we've sold our two practices and now we do everything online. And our overall mission is to heal dry eyes naturally. And so we're on a mission right. to, to reach 1 million individuals in that way. And we do that through education. So we teach people how to heal their body from the inside out. And then in turn, that will heal their dry eyes. And then we also have very natural products without right. <clears throat> harmful preservatives that they can use around their eye and on their eyelid. Right. And therefore that will help in their healing journey as well. I love that. So I'm going to come back to the things that you use uh, to help people heal their dry eyes. But I do want to ask you at this point, like why healing dry eyes? Like, is that, do you see that being a big challenge for a lot of people? And what happens typically when someone is suffering from dry eyes? You know, what kind of symptoms do people have? Yeah, so we actually wanted to go into pediatrics. We we went in, we wanted to create a children's clinic for eyes and help kids learn how to read better because there's a lot of reading difficulties or reading disabilities in this world yeah. that are misdiagnosed yeah. as something like ADHD. Right. And so we wanted to go into that market and really help a lot of children. Yeah. But you know, God had other plans because instead of throwing pediatrics at us in our practices, he threw us geriatrics. And so oh, yeah. we started seeing a lot of women and a lot of men over the age of 60, 55, 60. And with dry eye, it happens more in postmenopausal females. Yeah. And so that 60, 55, 60, 50 years old females that are going through hormonal changes have a lot of dry eye. So we were seeing a ton of dry eye in our clinic. Yeah. And before we started our own business and started our own practices, we were actually working at a dry eye clinic. So it's, it's always been kind of embedded in our brain. Yeah. And just one day we were, we were selling other products for dry eye, other people's products. And I was at a conference one day and somebody was just like, you know, you're the expert, you should sell your own products. And that was right. kind of when the light bulb went off right. and we changed our online business to sell every product that we were already selling in our practice, but we right. went to a broader sense. And regarding the, the, the prevalence of dry eye in the U S alone, almost 10% of people have dry eye. So 30 yeah. million people have dry eye. It's almost up to 40 million now. So right. worldwide, it's even bigger than that. And so yeah. the dry eye comes as a result of the poorer diet that we're eating. We're eating a lot more junk than we used to. Right. That's causing inflammation in the body, which is causing your eyes to be irritated. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said before, those hormonal changes in, in, in postmenopausal females is the biggest one that we see. And yeah. that's kind of who we target online is we yeah. try to reach those postmenopausal females because the, the strategies we use to, to heal your body inside and out also helps with other things like arthritis and high blood pressure and diabetes and everything else. Yeah. So dry eye is very prevalent, mm -hmm. but we like to treat it as a symptom to an overall disease state of the body. And that's how we usually approach it when we're, when we're talking with patients. 
Right, right. I, I love that, that holistic approach, you know. And um, tell me, um, Travis, what are the very typical symptoms? Like you said, dry eye is very prevalent, like um, 10% of the U.S. population have dry eye. So what, what typical symptoms do people like experience when they're having, you know, suffering from dry eyes? So obviously the most obvious symptom is dry eye. And so that, that irritation that you're having with your eyes, you just feel like you can't keep them open. They're yeah. burning. That's kind of that typical dry eye symptom. Now the, the atypical symptoms, and this may sound crazy, but your eye actually waters more than it should. And yeah. so if your eyes constantly are watering, that means you're, you're, there's something off. And the reason they constantly water is because we have little glands in our eyelids called meibomian glands. Right. These glands secrete oil onto our eye to make your eye more comfortable. And when they secrete oil onto your eye, it actually locks in your tears. Yes. And so it keeps your tears intact. It makes your eyes more comfortable and therefore you won't, you won't have any problems. Now, what happens is when those glands become, they either atrophy or they become dysfunctional, then the oil is not getting on the eye. It's not locking in that tear layer and the tear layer is breaking up. When that tear layer breaks up, it almost feels like you have something in your eye. Yeah. And when you have something in your eye, your brain tells your eye to start watering more. Yeah. And so your eyes are watery as a, as a result of this dysfunction in that oily layer of tears. So that's another atypical symptom of dry eye. And then another symptom is if you wake up with your eyelashes and eyelids stuck shut because there's a bunch of yeah. crusties, that's actually a sign of blepharitis, which is inflammation of the eyelids, which leads to dry eye as well. So right. those are kind of some other symptoms that people will notice. And then if your eyes are always red or painful, I mean, that's, yeah. that, those are other symptoms as well. Okay, okay. So um, you mentioned that postmenopausal women, women over 40 tend to have more dry eyes, but also people in other age groups um, have dry eyes. So what are the physiological and, you know, the, the <clears throat> cause factors, like what happens physiologically? Why do people get like dry eyes other than, you know, the, those glands clogging up, but what happens, like what are the reasons behind dry eyes? Yeah, great question. And there's a lot of different reasons that can occur other than just postmenopausal females. That's just yeah. what we target our marketing on. That's yeah. what we target kind of our, we have a dry eye bootcamp challenge. Mm -hmm. It's at dryeyebootcampchallenge.com. It's free and it takes them through eight weeks and it heals that person that's more that postmenopausal female. Yeah. And the other causes are LASIK. So LASIK and surgery on your eye are another big cause of dryness because you're literally severing the nerves of your eye with LASIK surgery. I never recommend LASIK to anybody because I am a dry eye specialist and I've seen the yeah. complications. Okay. And so, but it has worked for, for millions. And so yeah. don't let that deter you from having LASIK, but just take it into thought. If you have any dryness at all, I would not recommend having it done, but then other surgeries as well. So like cataract surgery, glaucoma surgery, those are some big causes of it. Right. And then screen time, screen time is another big one right now. Because when yeah. we're on our screens, we don't blink as much. When we're on our computers, when yeah. we're on our phone, we just don't blink as much. And when you're blinking, what's, what that's doing is it's milking those glands. And so every time you blink, those glands secrete oil, and then the oil makes your eye more comfortable again. If you're not mm. blinking as much, those glands aren't releasing that oil as much. Right. And what will happen is those glands can start to atrophy. So we're actually starting to see dry eye at a younger and younger age yeah. as a result of the children being on screens all the time. And right. so that's becoming more detrimental for yeah. dry eye. And I think that's why the prevalence of it is going up mm -hmm. and then diet diet's a big cause of it. So yeah. we're eating, everybody's starting to adapt the, the Western diet, which is terrible because the, we have a terrible diet. The U S has a terrible diet and it's starting to spread worldwide now too. And it's filled with, you know, pesticides and fertilizers and yeah. GMO foods that are non-organic. And we kind of recommend you shift all of your eating to organic and get away from things in a box and can because all your food that you're eating is mostly causing you to become inflamed and it's yeah. causing other problems as well. So yeah. try to stick to that organic whole foods diet if you can. So those are kind of the three main ones is the diet that you're eating, yeah. the lack of drinking water. So hydration, mm -hmm. increased screen time, mm -hmm. and then um, surgery. Those are kind of the big ones and yeah. contact lens wear. I should mention that in there. If you wear contact lenses, you usually have right. because you're putting a piece of plastic in your eye that's disrupting your tear film. And so there are ways that you can combat that dryness as well. Okay, love that. 
So um, tell me a little more about what happens in the stress that we daily experience, uh, how that influences levels of hormones and that kind of in turn lead to different complications such as dry eyes. How is that yeah. related? Yeah, that's another great question. And stress is a good thing. Stress is a good thing when it's done properly. Okay. And so the problem that we have now is that we're chronically stressed. And so yeah. stress is made to save your life. If a yeah. lion's coming at you, you want your stress hormone, your cortisol to kick up into gear yeah. so that your pupils dilate so you can see everything and then right. it can run faster. Right. And so that is where stress is a good thing. The problem with today is that we're all so stressed out. We're constantly comparing our lives on social media to each other's and everybody right. puts their best foot forward on social media but nobody sees what's going on behind the scenes. Right. So we're comparing right. ourselves on social media. We're out over scheduling ourselves. We're doing too much. Commuting used to be a big part of that, but that's kind of gone down here recently due to COVID, but yeah. commuting causes a lot of stress. And then just stress in general, what's on TV, watching the news is very stressful. Yeah. And so I don't do any of that. I don't watch the news. I don't commute. Um, I try to do a lot of things that decrease the stress, but what happens is when we have that stress over a long period of time, the cortisol hormone, it's yeah. good in short-term effect, but if it's there all the time, it's causing more inflammation in your body. Inflammation leads to more redness, more pain, and it's just going to lead to more disease. And so that's, that's where stress kind of plays a role. And some ways to combat stress, yeah. simply write a gratitude journal. So every night right. before you go to bed, this is what I do, is I write down three things that I was grateful for that happened yeah. that day. Yeah. It makes you kind of recollect on that day and the good that happens. And what happens is you're training your brain to start watching for good yeah. throughout the day instead of bad. Right. Now, this is my challenge to everybody. If you watch the news right now, yeah. watch the news for seven straight days and see how stressed out and tense you are. Right. And then switch it, stop watching the news and just gratitude journal, write down three things that you're grateful yeah. for, stop watching the news for seven days and see how much better you feel as a result of that. So I'm a big gratitude journaler. I meditate every morning. My first five to 30 minutes of my day, depending on when my son wakes up, is my meditation time. Yeah. And then, you know, just give your spouse a hug, laugh with them, yeah. do things like that. It's, it makes a big difference and yeah. stop watching the news. I mean, those are kind of some big right. things that you can decrease that stress. Okay. Okay. I love that. So um, thanks for sharing those, uh, those great tips. I love the, the one with the gratitude because, you know, research shows that, you know, um, 10,000 hours of active meditation kind of changes your brain and also gratitude kind of, you know, rewires the brain. And that is beneficial to definitely all kinds of different um, things such as lowering stress levels and lowering those cortisol levels. So um, I absolutely love that one. And um, do tell me, um, other than lowering stress, because stress obviously plays a big part in the inflammation and the you know, factors that lead to dry eye. Um, however, other than stress, what else can I do to reduce my, uh, you know, improve my dry eye naturally? Yeah. So one of my favorite ones is eyelid hygiene. And so making sure that you're cleaning your eyelids really well. Yeah. So when you wash your face, find a good face wash, first of all. And of course we sell one now, but we just released ours a year ago, but you wash your face with a natural lower preservative, get rid of the junk that's in most face washes. So you wash your okay. face, really pay attention to those eyelids, make sure you clean them. Right. And after you clean your, your eyelids and, and dry it, we recommend a hypochlorous acid spray. Hypochlorous acid sounds scary, but it's actually yeah. a natural part of our immune system. Okay. And our immune system uses that to decrease our bacteria growth. And so when we take it, I actually have a bottle right here. And when you take hypochlorous acid spray, you spray it on your eyelids just like that, and you just leave it on. Okay. And you don't have to wipe it off. I usually like to just rub it in gently, yeah. and you just leave it on. It doesn't cause any harm to your eyes. It's safe for your eyes. But what that does is it actually helps your immune system decrease the bacteria load right. that's on your eyelids. We all have bacteria on our skin. Right. When our bacteria becomes overpopulated on the eyelids, that causes inflammation, which mm -hmm. then decreases the functioning of those glands. And so this is just helping that. And we recommend everybody do this, the hypochlorous acid spray and cleaning those eyelids. We recommend putting it right by your toothbrush, spray it on twice a day whenever you brush your teeth, and it will just help keep your eyelids maintained. And a good eyelid hygiene regimen is something that everybody should do. 
So that's kind of number one. Yeah. Number two is replace your breakfast, replace your breakfast with a green smoothie. And mm -hmm. so everything in the breakfast category is inflammatory from toast to bagels, to waffles, to most things that we eat for breakfast, cereals, yeah. all cereals are pretty much inflammatory. They're all inflammatory. Wait, just so let me just ask you at that point, like you mean cereals in general, even like a uh, whole grain, whole grain oats and that kind of stuff, you would put yeah, that so, under inflammatory? Um, there are pretty much no cereals out there that don't have added sugar. Yeah. And you know, Cheerios is probably the best, but it still yeah. has added sugar. And okay. we actually recommend staying away from gluten as well. Yeah. Gluten has been shown to pretty much be inflammatory in everybody. It's yeah. just a matter of what impact it has on you. So right. for me, gluten is detrimental. It makes me depressed. It gives me eczema. It gives me eczema all over my face and my skin, and it gives me arthritis. So it causes a yeah. lot of inflammation in my body. Okay. And I have Hashimoto's thyroiditis as probably right. a result of eating gluten when I was younger. Okay. And I, I got diagnosed with that in 99. So a long time ago, but gluten causes inflammation. So we actually recommend staying away from most grains like gluten and corn and all of those. And yeah. if you are going to eat grains, stick to like wild organic rice or wild organic quinoa, those ancient grains that are a little better. Sorghum is another good one. Right. Um, those aren't going to be as inflammatory, right. but even lowering your grain amount, lowering that carb load and lowering yeah. that sugar load. Right. And so that's why we, we say replace your breakfast with a green smoothie because mm -hmm. people don't like to be told what they can't do. Right. But if you replace something, they'll notice a difference. So we call it our 21 day smoothie challenge. The first seven days, okay. you're not going to be comfortable because you're putting all these new nutrition, nutritional packed shake in your body. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be uncomfortable for the first un unbearable almost for the first seven days because yeah. your, your gut's not used to that. Right, right. You're, you're retraining your gut. And then seven through 14, those days are kind of the uncomfortable stage where you're still going to have a little bit of gas, maybe a little diarrhea here and there. And then after day 14, you actually get addicted to the smoothies because mm -hmm. you are addicted to whatever you repeatedly put in your body. If you eat yeah. pizza every day, you're going to be addicted to pizza. If you eat green smoothies every day, you're going to, you're going to crave that green smoothie and it's going to be better for your, your body as a whole, because it's going to decrease the inflammation. And yeah. so that's kind of one and two is eyelid hygiene, green smoothies. The third thing we always talk about is hydration, hydration. making sure that you're staying hydrated. So we say, we, we talk about hyperhydration in the morning, right? When you wake up, drink 16 to 32 ounces of water, mm -hmm. and then just drink a 16 ounce glass before about 30 minutes before every meal. That just kind of is a trigger to remind you. And then if you think about drinking, drink, if you think drink. Yeah. And so that's kind of another big one. We'd already talked about decreasing stress. That's another great natural way. Right to decrease that dry eye. I'll stop right there to see if you have any questions, but we have, we have plenty more. <laughs> okay. I do have a question. So you said like stay hydrated. That totally makes sense. So you stay hydrated from the inside. However, um, what do I do when the outside um, climate is very dry? Because there are places where, you know, it can get really dry. Um, the weather gets really dry in winter. And we also have room heaters that kind of, you know, dry, take out the moisture from the air further so those kind of lead to dry eye as well what can i do naturally to kind of counter the effects of the dry weather and the dry air inside our homes yeah that's that's a great question and going back to hydration making sure that you're drinking enough water is key to that i live in the desert so yeah. i know firsthand how dry it can be yeah um and it gets up to 120 degrees here so it gets right. really hot in the summers and then in the winters it's dry as well right so hydration is key for that but in your room especially if you have dry eye i recommend two things so you have that heater in there um try an air purifier an air yeah. purifier is just going to cleanse the air that's going to help and then also a humidifier so putting a humidifier right beside your bed, you're spending anywhere from six to nine hours in your bed at night, having that humidifier right there to really moisturize the air is going to pay dividends for you to keep your, your, to keep you more hydrated and to keep your eyes more comfortable as well, because you're sleeping, your eyes are closed, but your eyes still are a little bit open. And so keeping that yeah. air around you moisturized is going to help with that quite a bit. Oh, I love that. So um, moving on to, you know, the, the business side of things, I know that you're, a, uh, you're an eye doctor, however, you're also a very successful entrepreneur. 
And, uh, you know, taking this passion for healing dry eyes, healing people's eyes, you took that passion into your business and you're, you have a multi-million figure um, business on e-commerce business. So, um, you know, for the viewers who are also passionate about different, you know, ideas from healthcare and they want to take that idea into a business, um, what, what's your recommendation? And tell me your story. Like, how did you make this thing so successful? Yeah. And it comes back to just one thing and that's service. Yeah. We chose to, that we wanted to serve the dry eye community and we didn't care how much money that brought in. We just right. wanted to completely serve them, answer any questions that they have and just be, be at their service. Yeah. And as a result of serving them, the money follows. Right. When you start chasing money, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run away. But then when you focus on getting other people what they want and need out of life right. and serving them, that's when the money follows. So a quick story, back in 2019, we were, we, we were in a mastermind group, a group of business owners that got together. And it was this, this group all about direct response marketing. Direct response marketing is just like, hey, here's my product. This is the benefits of it. Here's why you should buy it. And so in 2019, we kind of launched this initiative to get more sales on our website. Right. And it was all direct response marketing, very salesy. And it was our worst year ever. We actually went down in revenue. We lost, I think we went down 10% in revenue and we barely had any profit. And yeah. so it was an awful year. So the next year we decided we're gonna, we're gonna, we cut that team and we decided to focus on service again. And in the year 2020, we grew 20% in revenue, but our profit almost doubled. Yeah. And so all we did was focus on service. So service is the biggest thing right. that you can do is find who you want to serve and serve them and don't expect right. anything in return. And if you do that, the money will follow. People will want right. to pay you. We right. do the exact same thing in the Amazon PPC space. I, my wife and I have this business for I love, and then I have my best friend and I own this business and we, we manage people's Amazon ads for them. And all we did is we started coming out with videos on exactly what we're doing in the agency to help out our clients. Right. And this helped other Amazon sellers. And as a result, we've become an authority in that space and people hire our agency or join our mastermind, which costs money. And we don't have any hard sales. It's just like, hey, here's what we offer. If you want to come on in, if not, that's okay too. Take our free stuff. And right. we have no expectation for sales, but the sales have come and we've doubled in size in a year yeah. as a result of just serving. Right, I love and that. The sec well, the second part of that is persistence. Right. You just have to keep going. Most people right. try something for like a month or two and then they're done. They're like, yeah. this didn't work. Yeah. We've been blogging and serving the dry eye space since 2016. So almost yeah. five years. Right. We didn't come out with our first product yeah. until about four and a half or three and a half years ago. So we were serving them yeah. for a year and a half yeah. before we came out with a product. And then same thing with the Amazon PPC side. We've been doing videos now for over a year and a half and no expectation just to serve and that's all that's all we do is just being persistent yeah. and serving yeah oh wow i love that so just to recap that so you know you have this uh, great idea that you know great idea and also the background knowledge in healing eyes and you want to take that to a successful business and two of the biggest tips and you have turned your idea into a very successful business so coming from that place of success you you know your biggest piece of advice um, two of them would be you know uh, keep serving without having expectation in return just you know the money will follow but the purpose is to serve people not to make a ton of money so I love that so that's some you know kind of a mindset thing as well and the second point is you uh, put a lot of emphasis on being persistent so you know uh, just even if it, if you're not seeing any results within a month or two months you keep doing what you're good at and you keep serving your community and I love that absolutely so um yeah it, please I was just gonna follow up with that by saying that it's when you are serving and you are being persistent yeah. and you just keep serving without expecting anything in, in return, you have to also be comfortable asking for the sale. And right. most people are extremely uncomfortable with that. And I, I, we are not. And so we yeah. will, we will tell you what we have and why you should use our products yeah. and it's up to you to choose, but we're going to ask you to buy from us because I believe it's, if you're buying my competitor's product, I believe that's a disservice to you. 
because okay. I believe my products are the best in the world. Right. And so make sure you have the best products in the world, number one, right. and then believe in them to the point that you're not afraid to ask for the sale. So that's what I was going to say. I remember now. Right. That's amazing. I, I absolutely love that. That's really going to stick with me, that one. So um, I do want to know, Travis, at this point, um, so your journey, like, um, it seems to be very smooth and, you know, you seem to have, you know, really done this, you know, turned this amazing idea to a very successful business but I do know life is hardly ever like that you know life throws challenges at us uh, you know we all have to face challenges and difficulties in life um, maybe you want to um, you know generously share a personal story where you overcame some difficulty or something like that with us so this has not been without challenges. <laughs> yeah. we, we face challenges on a daily basis and yeah. it's the ability to overcome the challenges that has really made us successful. And it all goes back to our why. Yeah. Why are you in business? So if, yeah. as soon as you figure out why you were put on this earth and why you are here, yeah. that is when you can get through any challenge. So when something happens, then it, it's not a big deal because the overall mission that you're trying to get to by the yeah. end of your lifetime, is it really going to matter of that small thing that happened this year or right. maybe this other thing that happened the year before? Yeah. And I will say that my wife and I have been through probably some of the most challenging things that I never wish upon anybody because yeah. we've, we've lost and we've lost a lot, not just money, but human, like human loss. And yeah. like we've, we've had, it's just been a very challenging time. So yeah. to give you some like specific examples, um, in 2017, we had a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company come after us yeah. with uh, a lawsuit. Um, they didn't expect us to fight back and we did, and we ended yeah. up winning. Yeah. And so it, nobody won. It was just a lot of money and it drained my brain every single day for the right. nine months it drug out. Right. But we ended up winning. They ended up paying for everything. So financially we didn't lose anything, yeah. but we lost that brain power of right. nine months of fighting a lawsuit with a yeah. multi-billion dollar company that could put us under in a matter of two seconds by doing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, we had over a hundred thousand dollars in inventory yeah. stuck in FDA customs because they didn't approve of our testing that we had done mm. and they made us get re it retested. So that was stuck for three months yeah. during our peak season. Yeah. And so we had to then find another hundred thousand somewhere yeah. and we got a loan to order more inventory to get it over right. Right. because we would have gone out of stock during our best season. And so that would have yeah. been detrimental for us, but we got through it. Yeah. Um, Another big one is that we, we tried to launch in Europe yeah. and it ended up being pretty devastating because we tried to launch our, we had a sunglass line at one point and we tried to launch those in Europe and in Europe, it's not really sunny over there. So it, they didn't sell. And so yeah. we lost a lot of money on that. Yeah. Um, and we've been through challenges. We've, we unfortunately lost a right. sun last year or in 2019 and that was detrimental to us and yeah. it was very hard to get through that, but we did. Yeah. Yeah. And each challenge, you can, you can always let it define you right? and right. you can always let that define the rest of your life, or you can take that challenge and see how it can make you stronger. Yeah. And then if it can make you stronger, use that as leverage instead of making it weaker and making your life defined by that challenge. Yeah. Instead, make yourself stronger as a result. And you, you can really get through anything once you've kind of gone through yeah. a lot of the challenges in life. Wow, I just love that. Thank you so much for, for sharing those with us. I mean, I think it's empowering for everyone to be listening to the, you know, challenges and the, you know, extreme hardships that you have gone through, but you have emerged, you know, um, stronger from those, from, you know, what I, from hearing your story, you know, coming out of those stronger and, you know, having all the success. So that's really empowering. I mean, that's amazing to, uh, hear all those incredible stories. So I really want to thank you for sharing those with us. Yeah. Right. So, um, Travis, do tell me like, um, come, you know, from the eye health, uh, space, uh, and any, you know, in general health, um, health and well-being in general is there any you know one big piece of advice you want to share with the audience because i i love to ask people what if you were to give like one big piece of advice what would that be yeah so going back to the green smoothies and okay. i love green smoothies because of the right. spinach 
and the greens that are in them. Right. You know, you've always heard that carrots are good for your eyes. Yeah. And that's because of the vitamins that are in those, the beta yeah. carotene, the vitamin A. Yeah. And what you're looking for is the vitamins A, C, and E. Yeah. But spinach is actually more abundant, organic spinach for that matter. So I always recommend that if you want to take care of your whole body and then in turn your eyes, yeah. that green smoothie is second to none. I have one. I just finished mine, actually. I have one every single morning mm -hmm. from around 7.30 a.m. when I eat with my son. And I just kind of sip it throughout the day until about 1030. And so it's about three hours of green smoothie and it's, it's great. So if you can do one thing for your health in, internally, I would say that. And then my second one, because I'm going to, I'm going to have a second one. Um, I would say gratitude journaling, just yeah. really focusing on the good in the world instead of focusing on the negative and stop watching the news. So yeah. I did three. Stop watching the news. I love <laughs> that one. I'm going to, I'm going to implement that one right away. <laughs> I'm not a big news watcher anyway. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so when people want to learn like more about your work and all the, you know, all this great stuff that you're doing, where can they find you? Yeah. So if you do suffer from dry eyes, we have a group on Facebook called the dry eye syndrome support community. Right. So you can head over there into Facebook, just type in dry eyes. We're usually one of the first ones to pop up and you can join us in there. We have about 14,000 members in there. And so a pretty strong community and we, it, it's very active. So be prepared for the activity level. And we go live in there. Usually once a week, we release a video in there. Um, and then we have a YouTube channel as well called the dry eye show. And so that we again, come out with a video every single week. It's usually an interview with an expert or a live with my wife and I. And then um, if yeah. you want to try our hypochlorous acid cleanser, the eyelid cleanser, yeah. we have a website. You can go to freehydrate.com. So freehydrate.com and you can get your first bottle for free. You just pay shipping and handling. Right. Awesome. We're going to link everything in the descriptions and I really thank you so much for, for, you know, joining me here today. It was really incredible. You know, all the stories and all the knowledge that you shared with us today. I'm really grateful for that. So thank you. I appreciate you having me on.